community-based health care, um, which would be like the original Harvard Community Health Plan. The idea is, is that some group of people gets together or a business gets together or something, and they, they're in the business of providing health care. They collect money from the patients, they provide basic care with that, and they turn around and they buy insurance for catastrophic illness only. Um, what that does is it moves the cash flow so that the insurance companies aren't getting a 30% markup on the entire health care budget. Um, it's not a new idea, it's not my idea. I mean, it's Harvard Community Health Plan is a good example of that. Massachusetts incidentally outlawed real community-based health care when they, uh, the first time they reformed health care. And I was working as a contractor then and buying my own health insurance and mine went up about 40% because of that little um, mistake. Um, now, single-payer health care is a form of community-based health care. I don't believe single-payer um, single health care, at least in terms of expanding Medicare to cover everybody, is a viable thing. Um, there's virtually no chance of getting it passed, so we're kind of wasting our time to even talk about it. But also, I don't think people have thought, to, have thought through what's going to happen with doing something like expanding Medicare to cover everybody. What's going to happen with reproductive health care? Um, and I think that pretty much covers where I stand on it. Um, I do, I also think that, that making a huge change that just jumps in on everybody can't fly because people really get upset when you start changing their health care. Um, even, even if you're making it better, they still get upset. Um, so we need to come up with some kind of a scheme that we move to gradually as we fix it. And I do actually have something on my website that talks about that a little bit more on HurtRobinson.us. Thanks. Sandy, if, if you don't mind, can I just kind of uh, redirect the question about health care? Um, the Obama health care plan is under attack. And I think the, the more specific question would be, you know, what, what do you think about the Obama health care plan and what, if anything, do you think should change about it? Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I believe health care is a right and a privilege in this country. I believe very strongly in that. Uh, we do need to defend and improve this bill. It is under attack. Scott Brown ran as the guy that was going to repeal health care. He continues to say this. Um, first and foremost, we have to make sure it's affordable. It doesn't bankrupt families, but this municipalities and individuals. Um, I think there are sensible ways to bring down the cost of health care. Uh, in the Medicare for program, for example, we should allow the Medicare program to negotiate for drug prices. It doesn't have the capacity to do that right now. The Medicaid program can do it. If you did it in the Medicare program, you could save close to $200 billion. Substantial savings. I believe the Medicare program should have the capacity to import drugs outside of the United States. Places like Canada. Substantial savings, close to $19 billion. Should have been in the bill last year. Uh, and finally, I believe we should move towards a system that promotes uh, patient outcomes and not number of procedures. There's a panel inside that healthcare bill right now uh, that Scott Brown is trying to repeal, that moves the healthcare system towards that end, and it could reduce cost by 30%. This, none of these proposals, none of these proposals actually cut back on uh, the benefits that are provided in the Medicare program. We don't have to cut people's benefits, and we don't have to privatize Medicare to make it more affordable. So that's where I would concentrate uh, my efforts. Great. Thank you, Mr. Franco. Thanks. I support single-payer health care. And what's wrong with the current health care is, thank you, um, is that when you're a leader, you don't negotiate from the middle. And as the actual only practicing attorney in this race with 15 years of litigation and negotiate, negotiation experience, a little tip to Congress is you start high to end up where you want to be. You don't start at the middle to end up at the bare minimum. And what they should have done was put single payer on the table, and they would have ended up with public option instead of public option and ended up with not. Mandates is a Republican idea. And all it does is give the insurance companies 35 million new customers to pad their salaries. The writing is on the wall. We keep tinkering with these different ideas, patient outcomes, um, you know, uh, patient, and, 
and we're going to cut costs and hospital stay limits and everything. My dad is a doctor and my mom is a nurse. They're both retired, but my dad was internal medicine specialist. And there was no way he could ever practice medicine today because he would actually take the time, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, with a patient diagnosing their very serious illnesses and literally saving their lives. We do not get that kind of health care today. I know no one does. I know I, you know, my general practitioner is pretty good, but if anyone's been to the gynecologist, you can time them on a stopwatch, three minutes or less. So single payer is the way that we have to go because uh, I'm telling it like it is, okay? Um, we spend seven to eight thousand dollars per capita in this country. The next the closest competitors to us in the industrialized world, Canada, France, and Britain. 4,000 and less. Okay, we are not and we are not getting what we pay for. We no, must go to single payer because it is the fairest and most equal. And you know who's upset about their health care? If we want to change our health care? The 45 million people in this country that don't have any. So how do we and how do we save costs? Because 30% of every single dollar in health care goes to administrative costs. And that is the insurance companies. And I will tell you the fights that my mother had because she managed the office. They own, they will keep the doctor's money as long as possible until they feel like paying you. That is why single payer must be the way. Today we start the fight. We don't see how this healthcare works. We start the fight today because we want to get there tomorrow. as someone who has benefited from the best quality health care one could possibly have in the United States, but I know that it was not always easy for me to get it. My uh, own medications, when I, before I had my transplant, were very expensive, and it was sometimes a real problem. My parents wondered if they would go bankrupt, uh, and some, we had some real difficulties with this. I lived in Europe for a number of years, and the amazing thing was that I was covered of the uh, European uh, health insurance system, even though I wasn't a citizen. I was simply a resident. But they decided that because I was a long-term resident in the country, this was actually in France, uh, that I would be covered for these expensive medications. I, in fact, owe my ability to walk because I had these medications on a continuous basis, which probably would not have been available to me in the United States under our private health insurance system. So this is a problem that uh, has been solved and can be solved. I was in favor of uh, single payer. When that was pushed off the table, I was in favor of public option, and I still am in favor of public option, which offers people the opportunity to buy into a government program. I think it is incredible already that there are 70 or 80 million people who have essentially government health care, people in the military, people, federal employees, uh, uh, veterans have uh, federal health care already. And frankly, I think it's absolutely unbelievable that the Republican members of Congress, including Scott Brown, take federal health care, in essence, for themselves while saying that 50 million people in the United States, that's one and a half times the population of Canada, should not have access to health care. It's incredible, uh, it's immoral, it's un-American in a fundamental way, and that's why I think it absolutely has to stop. In terms of the President's Act, if the president can succeed in this bill in approaching the objectives that we had in public option, if that works, so be it. If we find that we are not achieving those goals, we need to put that public option back on the table. Thank you, Bob. Representative Conroy. Uh, I, I also supported the public option. Unfortunately, it didn't get included in the president's uh, bill uh, and, and now the law. I do think we need to defend it, however, from the Republican right who just wants to completely unwind it, defeat it through the, the court process or, or perhaps even the legislative process. Uh, it is a step in the right direction. It's a flawed law. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and defend it, uh, but it's moving us in the right direction. I think the right direction is something more towards where everybody has access to health care, 
It's all affordable, it's all of high quality, uh, and it's guaranteed for everyone who's a resident of the United States. That is the direction 